Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, big part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Um, I have uh, told you point blank. I know we have a lot of college students who listen. Others who uh, are trying to make ends meet and uh, do various things to make money. I have told you one thing not to do. Don't do it as a favor. Don't do it for money. Don't donate sperm. I tell you this for any number of reasons. One, do you really want to meet up with the product of your donation in 10, 15, 20 years? No, you don't. Two, do you want to be dinged for child support when somebody finds some way of twisting the law to serve their own purposes and people start paying child support after donating sperm? No, you don't. Yes, I know. The place that uh, you donate the sperm to, the sperm bank, runs ads in your college newspaper and tells you uh, it's completely anonymous, completely safe, don't worry about it, your secret is safe with us, blah, blah, blah. You believe that? Do you? Then you want to listen to what I'm about to read to you from... Uh, it actually comes from the London Times newspaper, but it's about the United States. It's not about England. And uh, here is the story. I'm not kidding. This is uh, what's out there. This is what's happening, boys. If you've been thinking about taking a, a copy of Playboy and a Dixie Cup into a room and uh, you know going at it and then getting $150, here's, here's what you're going to get in the future. Here's the appreciation you're going to get from the person you have quote-unquote donated to. A teenager born from an anonymous sperm donation has managed to track down his biological father using a swab of saliva and the Internet in a case that could throw donor anonymity into disarray. Scientists have given warning that men who have given sperm are now at risk of being traced by offspring. With the dramatic growth of genealogy and DNA databases on the Internet. They said that guarantees of identity secrecy, which have been given to thousands of donors over the years, could prove worthless with the increase in such resources. The boy, who was 15 at the time, was able to evade anonymity safeguards by sending a swab of saliva taken from the inside of his cheek to a website used by genealogists to chart their family trees. For a fee of $289, his DNA was mapped and added to the website's database, which sends out email alerts to its customers when close matches appear. The service compares the user's Y chromosome which passes from father to son virtually unchanged against a database of Y chromosomes from other men. Nine months later, the teenager, an American who has not been named, was informed of two close matches. He was contacted by the two men who were using the website to trace their family trees. Though the biological father had never supplied his DNA to the website, his Y chromosome profile shared by his son and closely matched by the other two men, suggested they must be related. In fact, the similarities in Y chromosomes between the teenager and the two other men revealed a 50% chance that all three had the same father, grandfather, or great-grandfather. How do you like that? According to New Scientist magazine, which is publishing the report this week, both men contacted the teenager and had the same surname, although with different spellings. Using this information, he then used a second website, and uh, he compared the surname with a few details of his biological father given by the fertility clinic, which include date and place of birth, and his college degree. The search brought up a match, an exact match, for his father. Similar details of British donors, as well as religion and occupation, are offered to their genetic offspring. Brian Sykes, a geneticist at the University of Oxford uh, and chairman of a genetic genealogy website, said that the case showed the power of the Internet as a DNA resource. Professor Sykes, who first identified the association between the Y chromosome and surnames, said it could be used not only to trace biological relatives, 
but also help the police identify a suspect's surname after collecting DNA from a crime scene. These databases are only going to grow, he said. I would expect that in a few years, most of the surnames that we have in this country will have been tested and published. Is that freaky? Professor Sykes added that the case of the teenager tracing his father was particularly interesting because at no point had any unethical practice been undertaken. Yet, confidential information had been obtained. A spokesman for the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority said that the law prevented licensed clinics from issuing information which might lead to the identification of donors registered between August 1, 1991 and March 31, 2005. But there was nothing to prohibit individuals from using other methods or research to identify these donors separately. He added, it is important to remember that there was no legal or financial liability for any donors to the children conceived from their donation provided the treatment was given in an HFEA licensed center. Well, that's in England, folks. And we don't know what will happen with the law after a few people make uh, complaints or file lawsuits. Says here, Britain and a number of other countries now insist that sperm donors allow themselves to be identified once their children reach a certain age. In the U.S., most, most sperm donors are still anonymous. Wendy Kramer, founder of an online service that matches donor offspring with their half-siblings, said sperm banks are recruiting donors and promising them anonymity. I don't think that's a valid promise anymore. That's what it said. This one website is running 2,400 projects to trace particular surnames and has a database of more than 50,000 Y-chromosome signatures. The Sorensen Molecular Genealogy Foundation in Salt Lake City, Utah, promises to go even further by compiling a database of genetic markers representing 500,000 individuals with confirmed pedigrees going back at least four generations. New Scientist said, and listen to this, boys, New Scientist magazine said that this news would be unsettling for men who donated anonymously before the power of genetics was fully appreciated. I'm putting the emphasis in there because this is important. The magazine said that donors were often college students who traded their sperm for beer money. Many have not told their wives or children and have never considered the implications of having a dozen offspring suddenly wanting to meet them. Trudeau Lemons, a bioethicist at the University of Toronto in Canada, added, The case shows that there are ethical and social concerns about assisted reproduction. That we did not think about. This is what I've been trying to tell you boys. You do not donate sperm. You simply don't do it. Find other ways to make money. You don't donate sperm. You don't donate it to a sperm bank. You don't respond to an ad. Classified ad or otherwise. You don't donate it to lesbian friends. You don't donate it to straight friends. You don't donate it to ex-girlfriends who want to become pregnant. You simply don't donate sperm. Period. You don't. Do it. Ever. 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 Am I wrong? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I've talked to a lot of women, and did you know that a lot of women don't like your show? Yes, I did. It's the Tom Likas Show. It caught the tail end of the whole sperm thing, why guys should never do it, and I just wanted to know why. Because uh, there are many people now who are suing for the right to know who you are. Like, for example, someone created from donated sperm says, I want to know who my father is. Yeah. Do you want uh, people coming to your front door years later saying, I need to get to know my, my birth father? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to clarify. I, I didn't hear what it was because, like I said, I catch it, but I just got a little late out of work today. So, Are you aware also that there are people who are eventually going to figure out how to get child support? Yeah, yeah. So, are those two spectacular reasons to never donate sperm, ever, not ever? Well, yeah, I mean, I was never even thinking of doing it. I mean, I'm engaged, so, I mean, there's no reason for me to do it at all, period. But I was just, you know, wondering why. What does being engaged have to do with it? I mean, uh, people don't do it because they have girlfriends or fi fiancés. They do it because they want to get money. Oh, no, it's not It's not just that. It was a general, just a general question. Yeah. I just, usually, like I said, I usually listen to your show, and I just happen to miss your whole explanation for why you said 
guys shouldn't donate sperm, and I was just trying to figure out um, what you have said. Now you know. Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, I was just, I had the same question, but when you mentioned child support, uh, how are they going to get child support when they're, they're asking for my sperm? Uh, because you're the father. I, uh, I assumed that these uh, sperm banks would, you know, they would make it so that you can't ever be trailed back. To well, they've said they've promised anonymity, and now we've found out that uh, the promise is uh, a lie. See, I, I, uh, I've been told before that I'm gorgeous, and I, and I know I'm brilliant. I don't care. I, I, I want to spread my genes, but I... Uh, what if uh, somebody uh, has a baby uh, with your sperm and later on hires uh, an adventurous attorney who wants to figure out how to get you to pay child support? That's awful. That's terrible. Yeah. Also, what happens when your five or six brilliant children decide they all want to meet you? Well, I, can t I, I don't mind. I'll what if it's stuff? ten? What if it's 20? What if it's 50? Well, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Then. What happens when a parent of one of your offspring dies and suddenly the kid shows up at your door and says, you're my only parent? It's on mommy. It's not on me. Again, do you want to have to answer the door and answer these questions for the rest of your life just to get 150 bucks? Well, that's why you're the professor. Yes, yes, it is. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Roger on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. You know, I was listening to the radio earlier this morning, and some guy in Sweden had donated his sperm to two lesbians. The lesbians are breaking up, and now they're going after him for child support in Sweden. They're not just going after him for it. They got it. Wow. They I mean, got this, it. This is, and that is the future, Roger. And that's exactly what you're talking about. I heard I was like, oh, my God, Dad's going to be talking about this one. Oh, I've been, but see, I've been talking about it for a long time, and now you see it has already happened. I know. Just d never doubt the professor. That's right. Hey, Dad, can you take me out tribal style? Here you go, son. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Oscar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Oscar. Hey, listen. Um, I remember. I don't. I don't have a personal experience with donating sperm. That's for sure. But I do recall about six months ago you had on the show where some guy was smart enough to put Tabasco sauce on his condom without his girlfriend knowing. He t left the room for a while, came, but he comes back to a screaming chick on the bed trying to get herself pregnant. Yeah, we recommend that to guys all the time to put uh, Tabasco sauce in a condom when you're done with it. Well, I think this is a good time to you know make sure all these guys are listening to that. Well, that's true, but I mean, the, the, how about the guys like that last caller who was ready to donate sperm? He's ready to donate it. Hell no. You know, they should just do what I do. You know, I, I get a little more creative with it. I give them pearl necklaces, but then I make sure I, I take it off at the end of the night. Yeah, do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, all I could say is don't do it, man. I agree with you, Oscar. Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, I know usually you always just give advice to men, but in this case, too, I think it, don't you think it'd be the same for women? Yes. They actually give, um, I have heard that they give up to $5,000 for a harvested egg. Well, there's a reason, because they have to harvest it. Uh, donating sperm is a lot easier than donating, right. don donating an egg. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> surgery, for God's sake. And, right, but um, you, so you think that it would be the exact same thing, that uh, someone or an offspring would come try to find you, would try to get child support? That's entirely you. possible, yes. Oh, I can't even, be I cannot believe uh, this. This is ruining it for so many people. It's ruining it for the people who well, to have sperm. If all of us hold out and refuse to donate, I know, uh, I they know. will lobby Congress to make real laws that protect donors. Yeah, that's true. The that's only true. reason there are no laws protecting donors is because these morons continue to donate. Stop yeah, donating eggs and sperm. Stop doing it. Very true. Good topic, Tom. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate the call. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm okay, Steve. They actually had the same exact topic, I think it was on like 2020 or Dateline, about a year ago. And this guy had like 12 kids. And some of the kids wanted to come back and try to meet their father. 
And the guy, you know, he uh, he said that he would go and he'd always bail out and all that and never show up. You know, and it was just, I mean, what a stupid idea to be able to, you know, to donate your sperm and have some kid try to find you and not want to see him. I mean, what kind of damage are you doing to the kid? Well, guess what? You know what? Uh, none of these people wanted to have a relationship with a child. None of them. Yeah, I mean... And it was explained to them, which would, turned out to be a lie, that they would remain anonymous forever. The records would be sealed. Nobody could find out. So yeah, I, I don't think uh, any of these sperm donors owe it to visit any of these children. No, 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 exactly. I agree 100% with you. I agree 100% with you. i tell you what, if somebody wrote me a letter like that, I'd say, see ya! <laughs> no kidding. Hey, can you take me out with a screaming, screaming orgasm? Here you go, Steve. Oh, oh, God, oh, yes, yes, yes. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> God almighty. Yeah, I mean, if I were stupid enough, thank God I didn't uh, do that, uh, you know. Uh, take the Playboy and the Dixie Cup into the back room there and uh, get my 150 bucks for donating sperm. Thank God I didn't do that, because if I got a phone call or if I got that knock at the door... I would avoid it like the plague. I would not talk to that offspring. I would not want to know them. I would not want to see them. I would uh, spend every penny I had on lawyers so they would never get any of it. No doubt about it. Kirk in San Diego, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? Not much, Kirk. It, oh, well, I was just calling to say, like, why not? If you if somebody wants your cream, why not donate it, man? Mm -hmm. I'm an egomaniac. I'd like to have 100 kids coming knocking on my door and all looking like me. You would like that? Why not? Uh, what if they said, okay, now you owe us child support? I mean, uh, never mind about that. Who's ever thinking about that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, you should think about it. Why? Like, if I have no money to give them, then how are they going to how are they gonna ask for child support? So your, your whole life you're planning on being a loser, is that right? No, even if I do make money whatsoever, if they ask for money... I'm not talking about asking for it. I'm talking about an attorney goes to court and says, you are the biological father, you pay. Well, then technically they'd have to prove it in court. Yeah, all, they though, all they need is a DNA test. How? All they need is a DNA test. Do you understand? For the majority for the majority of their life, I wasn't responsible for that child. It, pal, it doesn't matter because you know why? You know you're an idiot because you really don't know what you're talking about. There are no laws protecting you. None. Yeah. None. There are no laws protecting you. Oh, Phil, I got a lot of sperm to donate. There's going to be thousands more like me. All right, Mr. Studd, have a good time out there, and I, I hope they do all come over there and uh, start demanding money. I do. You're an idiot. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, you know, I had a question. Um... Would a child be able to claim child support if the father was not named as a biological father on the um, birth certificate? All it takes is a DNA test, dear. But, like, say if a married couple had decided to have a child and for some reason they got, you know, they were split and the father, the spouse was named as the, um, the father on the birth certificate, would they be able to go later and claim that? Uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, you know why? There's no laws protecting sperm and egg donors. All right, guys, let's not let's not give up those little ones now. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> those little know, credit cards. Different donate if that was the case. Yeah, those little credit cards out there. You know the ones I'm talking about. Definitely. Every time you ejaculate, you're sending out about a million little Visa cards out there. <laughs> Definitely, um, guys, do not give those up. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Tom. Can you uh, take me out tribal style? African tribal style. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kota lenenge, asika mama. Oya kota lenenge, asika mama. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Vic on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, bud? I'm okay, Vic. You know, fascinating subject, because it's just happened recently as a private investigator. I had a client call me and tell me that he uh, didn't know who his dad was. Uh, his mom had told him that he was an artificial insemination, and he wanted to find his dad. And I told him, I will not take that case. But you know somebody else did. Uh, of course, some scumbag, of course, to make money. But I, I'm totally against this. 
or uh, uh, people donating their semen and then people coming after their dad for child support. I think it's complete BS. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you're one guy standing up for this, but uh, there's a lot of sleaze bags out there. Uh, there's money to be made, and they wouldn't be breaking any law by helping these guys uh, pull this off. And right. the real problem is that we don't have any laws protecting donors of sperm and eggs. I agree. And uh, if I hadn't listened to your show, I probably would have taken the case. But because you've... Uh uh, uh, fulfilled me in knowledge, and I'm well versed in this territory now. I'm not going to. I'm proud of you, Vic. Thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas, 1 800 5 800. Tom. You're so rageful. I have never heard this word, by the way, rageful. But uh, all right, I'll assume your IQ is in the triple digits for the sake of argument. You've never spoken to a psychotherapist. Uh, you're a psychotherapist, or are you just a psycho? The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And um, many of you boys from Dallas, from the surrounding area, have written to us. We started doing Boys Night Out back in June when we sold out the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles. We did it again in uh, Seattle. Drew over 2,000 guys. Did it again in Riverside, California. I drew well over 1,000 there. And um, of all the places where our show is on, uh, you boys in uh, Dallas uh, have written to us the most and said, When will it come to Dallas? And I'm here to announce that uh, we are bringing Boys Night Out to Dallas on Friday, December 2nd at the world-famous, legendary, majestic theater at 8.30 p.m. on that Friday. That's one month from today, boys. I'm the MC of the event. Bobby Slayton is our headliner. We're there also with John DeResta and Steve Brewer. And it is one outrageous show where we say things on that stage we would never, ever even think of trying to say here because we'd never get to come back to work the next day. That'll be it. That's simple. It's a show of guys only. Guys on stage, guys in the audience. No chicks. You don't bring your girlfriend. You don't bring your wife. This is not date night, boys. This is for the boys. Made to go out and have a steak beforehand. Go out to a strip club afterward. Bring the boys from the office. Bring the guys you play golf with. Bring the guys you watch football with. Bring the guys you booze with. Bring the guys you go to the strip club with. Bring the bachelor party. You can also bring your son or your nephew because there's no age limit on it, baby. This is outrageous comedy. And I know my boys in Texas can handle it. Believe me, probably better than anywhere else. Tickets are available right now if you call Ticketmaster at this number, 214-373-8000. It's 214-373-8000. You can order online from Ticketmaster.com. All the information is on BlowMeUpTom.com. It's one night only. And uh, we may very well be shooting our DVD of Boys Night Out that night. So uh, you'll be making history with us because uh, this is the first time I've produced a theatrical event. And so far, yeah, we, uh, we've gotten rave reviews. There's no doubt about it. So uh, Boys Night Out, Friday, December 2nd at the Majestic Theater in Dallas. 8.30 is the time. 214-373-8000. You can go to Ticketmaster.com. You can go to BlowMeUpTom.com for details. It's all right there. And we'll see you on Friday, December 2nd for Boys Night Out in Dallas. 214-373-8000. 8,000. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Now we find sperm donors getting on the Internet and finding the... Uh, I'm sorry. We're here seeing the children of sperm donors going online and finding their so-called fathers. The guys who donated sperm when they needed beer money in college and trying to contact them. It's unbelievable. Jeremy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Yes. I missed the, uh, the monologue at the beginning of the hour, but... Uh... I was a sperm donor for all my three years at USC and then through two years to graduate school. And I was blatantly lied to. Are you are you saying that they can actually come and track me down before they're 18 and get get shot for it? Well, I read a big, long story out of the London Times. Uh, there was a 15-year-old boy who got on the Internet, uh, found a website, sent a swab of saliva in, had his uh, DNA matched up with a bunch of other people. Uh, who had uh, donated sperm and were looking for their children. 
or other people who were looking for children that they'd given up for adoption or whatever. There was a DNA database online. What happened was this boy found uh, two people who were a near match and found out that he had either the same father, grandfather, or great-grandfather of, of these three guys. Then he matched up the information with what the sperm bank gave out. And what the sperm bank gave out was uh, uh, where you went to college, what kind of degree you had, what your date of birth was. And he matched it up and figured out who his father was. He got an exact match. I, I cannot believe I'm hearing this because it seems that I would like to hear some legal advice on that because it seems to me I would blatantly lie to you and signed um, paperwork saying it was completely anonymous. They would have no way of tracking me down. Right, and but but the thing is, when you donated sperm, you gave a certain amount of information. Yeah, I did. And if somebody was able to track down other people with similar DNA to yours, mm -hmm. they could then match up the information with, with what information you gave out. So even though technically the sperm bank didn't give the information out... Okay. I see, I see. Okay, I missed the beginning there, so I wanted to find so out. So they're, they're guaranteeing anonymity, but they had no idea that the DNA would be traceable and you could get on the Internet and find other people with similar DNA. They had no idea. Exactly. And that's how they're going to get away with it. They're going to say, well, at the time, uh, we didn't know, and we didn't give the information out. We didn't give the guy's name. We didn't do it. <laughs> Here's another question for you. Say um, they, uh, this lady who has offered some insemination, she comes back the, after the kid's already 18, can they, if they were to find me, can they actually try and sue for back child support owed even though the kid's 18 now? Well, we don't know yet because, uh, guess what? People are still figuring out how to profit from this. Now, I would have never have done that if I would have known this. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell people now, and yes, I understand you would never have done that. Exactly. I mean, you know, because they're taking college kids. I remember the ad specifically. It was like 600 bucks for doing what you're doing anyway. So, you know, at 19 years old, you're not thinking about this. You're thinking like this... This company is saying you're completely anonymous and free from all responsibility. So, right. yeah, people need a. That's insane. I'm glad you're getting the word out there, though, because I wish I'd have heard it ten years ago. Yeah, well, I, I hope that uh, sperm and egg donations uh, go down to zero. I, I want to see everybody stop donating. Exactly right. You're, you're so right. Great, Tom. Well, thanks a lot, man. Jeremy, thank you. It's Lee on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Lee. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Look, uh, personally, I happen to agree with everything that you're saying. Uh, professionally, I am uh, an attorney licensed, <clears throat> excuse me, in the state of Florida, practicing in family law. And professionally, I turn down any case where people wanted to find out their birth parents or, or sperm donors. I wouldn't take those cases. I think that's wonderful that you are that ethical, but uh, it wouldn't even be a violation of ethics to do that, nor to be a violation of the law, as you know. Oh, uh, we need laws protecting these people. Well, I agree with you. Um, as for the, the um, aspect of child support, in the state of Florida, you can only go back two years for child support. Not that you would even want to pay that because you weren't expecting to ever hear from this child yes. at any point in the But future. in the state of California, you can go back 17 years and 364 days and say, tag, you're it. Unbelievable. But, uh, yes, you're right. We do need laws to protect people, and that's what they assumed when they were doing it, most of them, that this person would not step up into their lives at some point in the future and perhaps wreck it. Now, I, until we stop donating eggs and sperm... Uh, the laws will not be changed. Anything that gives the government an opportunity uh, to get into your life, and anything, I'm sorry to say, it, anything gives attorneys an opportunity to profit, will be left that way until people start screaming. And what we need are the barren and infertile of America to start saying we can't find sperm or eggs anymore because of the laws. We need laws. There you go. We, everyone's got to stop doing it, and then uh, the, they'll implement the laws, and people go back to doing it safely. Exactly. Lee, thank you. Appreciate the call. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, I just want to let you know that uh, I believe it was you guys that ran a story about, I don't know, back in the summer sometime, that already talked about a lady depositing or getting uh, donated sperm and getting child support off of it. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, or, and uh, suing for it. I don't know if she actually got it. Yeah, but well, she filed I, a lawsuit I, to try to get it. And here's yeah, the deal: I mean, even even if you file a lawsuit against me, I've got to spend money on an attorney defending myself. 
Yeah, but not all everybody that is donating the firm has the money to do that. Apparently. That's right, and that's my point. Uh, that that hundred and fifty or two hundred or three hundred dollars you're getting for donating sperm, you have no idea how much right. that could cost you down the line. All right, all right, man. Well, thanks. Blow me up. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Steven on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, Tom. What's up? Not much. You are the godfather of all creation. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up this subject. So that subject like that is the reason why I didn't donate the Dixie Cups in the first place when I, I was in college. I understand. I mean, I just did this subject. scares the hell out of me what you're talking about right now. And sooner or later, somebody like a person like Larry Park or some shyster down the road is going to take somebody for a bunch of money. Yeah, well, that, there's attorneys right now trying to figure out how to profit from this. Believe me. Well, it, it, well, up where I live, I mean, it, it barely you barely couldn't find an attorney to look for something like that because there are all a bunch of damn farm boys up there. So, But uh, being back down here in California listening to you again sure sounds great. Stephen, thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. What do you get for your girlfriend? Tell me about it. Well, she's 30, single mother with a kid, and I work with her. Uh, you get her a new boyfriend. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is PJ on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Uh, not much. I was just wondering what happens if one of these kids end up coming out retarded. I think a lot of the donors are retarded, so that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> yeah, because these college kids, you know, they're all on drugs and alcohol, all that kind of stuff. And they go in there, give their sperm. Kid comes out looking all deformed. Mother wants uh, to get money because she got some deformed kid. And... Goes to the sperm bank. Nobody, uh, you know, wants to say who the father is. So then she has to go straight up to the father to figure out where he came from, find out if he lied on any of these applications, stuff like that. Yep, that's entirely possible, BJ. Believe me. Oh gosh! Imagine uh, you uh, give birth to a kid, uh, or you, your donated sperm gives birth to a kid who has some kind of birth defect, or is in a wheelchair, and oh yeah, and then they come to you. Hey, uh, the welfare's <laughs> not going to pay for this. We're coming to the father, and that's you. <laughs> oh yeah, that would just suck. Anyways, that's all I got for you. Thank you, BJ. Appreciate the call. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Scott. Oh, no, let's get uh, Patrick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Patrick. Yeah, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Patrick. Well, first time I ever tried to call. i uh, just been listening to you for a little while here. But I uh, have uh, uh, one thing to say, uh, a question, first of all. Uh, how old do you have to be to uh, donate your sperm? I don't know if there's an age limit. I really don't. If you know how no. to uh, ejaculate, I think you're in. <laughs> well, uh, you know, that would be one question that I'd be kind of curious, you know, to give the folks on the air here yeah. you know, a little bit of knowledge. But mm -hmm. also uh, something that nobody, uh, I've heard people talk about this uh, subject before, and nobody brings it up other than how much money they're going to be making, 150 bucks. Or so, But uh, one question is, uh, do, do they ever think about, you know, 20 years later when they're about 35, 40 years old and they come across some nice babe and, uh, hello, becomes... Uh, Maybe their daughter or something. Well, we once had a call from somebody who uh, got into just that kind of situation. I don't know if sperm donation was the reason. Mm. But there was a guy who was like uh, late 40s or something, and he dated some hot chick, and he nailed her, and later found out it was his daughter. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've never heard anybody in you know, talk shows talking about that, but uh, I guess I don't listen to them all. But yeah. You know, that'd be a kind of a something to think about. Well, you got to wonder also if the number of retards is going to go up in the future because people are going to be having sex with their siblings more often or their, their, their children. That's true. That's true. You know, a lot of people don't think about that. They just think about the money. Another thing to think about. It boggles the mind. Just to make it simple, do not donate sperm or eggs. Don't ever do it. 
Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget, Boys Night Out, Friday, December 2nd, coming to Dallas, 214-373-8000. The Tom Likas Show.